How's it going everybody? Thanks for watching another video. So right about now, some of us might be getting that small bit of cabin fever sneaking in because we're either in quarantine or on total lockdown. But, got the perfect solution for you. So a few years ago, I transitioned from Reload Hawaii to Chemotherapy to Chemo365 where I was just covering gun and knife reviews to just about everything out there. Now I'm pretty positive, if I just stuck to that one topic format, I probably would have a lot more subscribers a lot quicker, but for me, it's more important for the people that view this channel to have some place to come to check out a variety of topics so you don't get bored. So if you click on my channel icon, you're going to see over 20 plus playlists, and I figured because we're all stuck inside, a great playlist to start are my travel videos. So we're going to kick it off with my two-part series of Pearl Harbor. Right before I left home, it was Pearl Harbor's 75th anniversary. So if you don't want to hear what I'm saying, just turn down the volume, put me on mute, throw it on your big screen TV if you can, because Pearl Harbor is absolutely stunning. We're going to go check out the Memorial, the Bofin, and then the Mighty Mo. Really inspirational, guys. Remember, if we can get through World War II, we can get through this. Enjoy the video. Okay guys, welcome back. Brother Kimo here with Reload Hawaii. As you can see, I'm hanging out at the World War II Valor in the Pacific National Monument, previously known as the USS Arizona Memorial. We're going to be talking about that red circle on the left-hand side because it is absolutely free to go to this park. Uh, it is part of some other parks. I think there's three other uh, parts to it, but they're not free. They give out 1,300 walk-in tickets. So if you want to make sure that you get yours, go there early, especially right around this time when there's Christmas break or summer break, something like that. Uh, you'll see me describing things here with text sliding in and out. These are all exhibits that you can see for free. The ones you have to pay for are the USS Bofin, the USS Missouri, and the PAM, the Pacific Aviation Museum. Uh, but just going there to check out stuff, it's absolutely free. The memorial, you can get on there for free. Only problem that I had was you can't take any type of bags in there. Okay, so they got baggage claims and checks for you there, uh, but you gotta watch what you take, especially if you have a lot of camera equipment. There's a good shot of the uh, modifications there that the Japanese did to their torpedoes. You know, we didn't think that a Japanese attack was gonna be successful. The harbor was too shallow for submarine attacks. Our radars were supposed to protect us from air and ship uh, invasion. And we didn't think they would travel 4,100 miles. And even if they did, what they had probably wasn't going to be enough to do much damage. But oh, were we wrong. There's a, a conning tower from one of the submarines there. They came with six aircraft carriers, like two battleships, nine destroyers, a partridge and a pear tree. They came at us big, man. They brought a lot of stuff with us. And they did it all in silence. You know, they used flashing lights and flag signals to communicate until the very last moment and two waves came, right? December 7th, right around 7.55, 8 o'clock, the first wave came, about 183 planes came around the northwest corner. They hit uh, Hickam Air Force Base and then Pearl Harbor and then 30 minutes later, they came around the northeast side, took out Wheeler Air Force Base and they did more damage to Pearl Harbor. But the first strike, they got battleship row, they took out all of our battleships in like two minutes. Attack in general was over in two hours. You know, we did some, some pretty bad things wrong. The first big thing is underestimating Japan. Of course, they wanted to be a superpower in Asia, and they couldn't have that around if we were there. So that was their goal, was to get us out of the picture. And they had signed an alliance with Nazi Germany and fascist Italy. So we should have been more up on our toes there. But, you know, like, nah, 
We got it. We, we did not have it. There's a Pearl Harbor survivor in the foreground there. A lot of those guys walking around the day I went there. But, you know, one of the big things we did wrong uh, were the airplanes and uh, General Short out there who was in command of the army that was in charge of keeping the Air Force safe was more suspicious of the local Japanese population committing sabotage. So what he did was he had three different levels. Level one was keeping the planes bunched up wingtip to wingtip with no ammunition, not ready to fight. Uh, in case of sabotage, it was easier to guard them. I think level two was like uh, like airstrike and level three was like a sea strike or something like that. But I can just imagine the Japanese pilots coming over from the northeast and the northwest and looking to see all these neatly organized fighter airplanes and just bah one bomb i can take out like 10. yeah that's pretty much what happened and that's the akagi one of the big 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 aircraft carriers one of six we did get lucky though uh you know in pearl harbor all our ships were kind of bunched together our airplanes were a bunch together so i mean they did a really good job they took down the airplanes so that their airplanes uh could you know do their business uh they would have no resistance but you know, when you look at it, we, that was kind of just the potatoes, the meat for our, our fleet and, and Navy in the Pacific. Uh, we had three aircraft carriers. The Saratoga was out getting its airplanes from uh, California, and the Lexington and the Enterprise were in uh, Wake Island and Midway, so they were gone. And then they didn't strike our submarine base, which was lucky, because that's where a lot of our oil was at. So we lucked out there. Unfortunately, you know, out of the 100... Uh, vessels there in Pearl Harbor, it was easy for them to pick up the big ones, uh, especially the Arizona, which was the only one that was just wrecked beyond belief, and uh, we couldn't salvage her. And we're lucky our submarine stayed in the game. The, no the Norwal, the Dolphin, the, uh, the Cachalot, and the Tutog, which the Tutog was just a dagger. We'll talk about that more when we get to the uh, uh, USS Bofin. 23-minute video here, and then you'll hop on that boat and just kind of bring it across. That is a USS Stennis. It is a gigantic US aircraft carrier. Right to the right of it, you see, I don't know if you can see it, it's so far away, that little tiny boat right there, that is a USS Missouri. We're gonna go on that. And that gleaming slab of white beautifulness is the USS Memorial there. And to the right of it, scary golf ball. I call it scary because it's a weather probe that the guys at NOAA use. And then that is the Clary Bridge connecting Fort Island to the rest of Oahu. We'll just have a look at this. You know, I'm gonna pan around so you can see the harbor itself and just imagine it. I'm gonna have some shots in here um, of what the harbor looked like during the attack. And if you can imagine this area just in shambles. I mean, oil spilt out on the water burning, guys trying to swim in that water burning. Uh, the guys that tried to recover the bodies from the USS Arizona just said they saw charred remains of guys just burnt to a crisp. Uh, Boat ride's like five minutes, it's pretty short. Of the 1,511 sailors and marines, officers on the USS Arizona, 335 survived. That leaves 100 or 1,177 still buried there forever on duty. 229 of the dead bodies were recovered, and some of them are at the Punchbowl Cemetery, as we'll see in part two. If you could imagine this, that big ship right in the front end got struck by a 2,000 pound bomb right in the front magazine, igniting 1 million pounds of gunpowder. Most importantly, this. Uh, there we go into the USS Arizona Memorial. Keep your voices low if you have to say something. If you want to say anything at all, just be respectful. This place is absolutely beautiful, open air design. She took on 1.5 million gallons of oil. 500 gallons of it is still under there, leaking about nine quarts a day, roughly that amount. There's a gun turret number three that pokes out of the water. And here's a good shot of that oil. Nine quarts of oil leaking out of it per day. That's just about how much your car takes, between five and eight quarts, if you wonder how much that is. She's about 608 feet long, 97 feet wide. And there is the wall with all of the names of the sailors and marines that died that day. You can see on the bottom right, there's a trash bag taped off. From what I understand, two more gentlemen are being brought home to have their ashes laid with their brothers. Uh, 
Well, when I got back to land, the visitor center, that's pretty much what I saw there. <laughs> and then I figured, okay, I got some survivors here. Look at this, a whole bunch of them, World War II veterans alongside Pearl Harbor survivors, just having a good time, hanging out with each other. Well, guys, that's the ending of this video, part one. Part two, we're going to be going to the USS Missouri. The U.S. is both in, and I'm going to bring you guys something a little personal from my family history. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you liked it, and I'll see you in part two.